Right, here we are. My name's uh, Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX. I'm going to interview Robert Wildman of CareStream Health Incorporated. And uh, he's in market segment manager and he's going to tell us about some very fascinating new technologies which we think can be applied to a wide variety of new industries. In other words, this is um, not unusual at this show that we have someone that has a product that has applications that are not yet being exploited. So could you fill us in a little bit? Yeah, absolutely, thank you, Peter. Um, so of, of great interest is uh, multi-layer coding capabilities that CareStream is, uh, is a world leader in, and that really springs that springs from our, our history of Eastman Kodak, which is uh, the founding of our company. We were spun off in 2007. We're the world leader in medical imaging, and through that medical imaging as well as photographic films, um, we've honed uh, the capabilities around multi-layer coding um, to allow us to simultaneously put down discrete layers onto flexible substrates. And so we've applied that in a couple of different industries and we see as broad application to a lot of other industries such as um, as we're showing here, energy storage, such as multi-layer electrodes, where you could put down a primer layer, and in multi-layer electrodes, solving some problems of today's batteries um, through design freedom that multi-layer structures offer at no additional cost, because just like a single layer, you can put down multiple layers at the same time, as opposed to needing to run through the machine many times. So this is interesting. You don't use the term there, but I think you said to me earlier there's a term slide coating. Correct. That's the that's what the one of the methods. This is called or cascade coding. It's sometimes referred to. It's referred to as slide because a lot of people are similar with uh, familiar with slot die coding, which you can kind of think of these as, as individual slot dies where there's a cavity to uniformly distribute the fluid, so you can get a, a uniform thin layer of fluid. Um, but then the the real trick associated with this is that as they cascade down one on top of the other, you create a discrete package that you still bead code here at the precision backup roll similar to, to slot die coding. So it's certainly true that we've noticed that uh, so many of these industries use slot die coating, a very old technique, very crude technique that's very slow relatively to multiple coating. And this uh, multiple coating uh, is not just a case of faster, it could be a better integrity coating. Correct. We can get to, you know, um, with the appropriate focus and right material sets on the order of 1% uh, uniformity, um, which is the common target for batteries. Um, and we can do that for each of the layers as well as the stack on whole. And again, the concept is that it really opens up opportunities to, to solve some of today's battery challenges. Um, as well as it could, could be applicable as to barrier coatings where there's a dyad approach of multiple alternating layers. Um, you know, uh, uh, in lighting, there, there's other opportunities for, for different kind of, uh, you know, light enhancement films, things of that nature, so. And when we come to things like supercapacitors and hybrid supercapacitors with battery technology as well, or battery technology itself, and that means lithium, post-lithium, and a whole host of technologies, we often have a separator, and you have some dream that maybe you could do the separators. Of course, they vary from something very crude and very porous to something that's an iron exchange membrane. We can talk about lithium metal, we can talk about fuel cells. Sure. Is that part of your dream? Yeah, I think there's some potential there as well. Um, with the right material science and the right system, to your point, um, you know, in addition to possibly using ceramic particles to, to kind of replace the, the separator, um, there's also technologies that with the right polymer-based structures and the right chemistry and the right processing, you can get self-generation of pores um, just through the coating and drying process. So there's potential application there. And you mentioned like solid state batteries. Um, you know, I think there's a good potential for that in the future as well as the interfaces are really a, a critical issue associated with that technology. And so if we can employ this type of, of coding process to enable the multiple layers to have the conformal, you know, intimate contact of interfaces for solid state, I think there's a real opportunity there as well. And a lot of these things are really almost just party tricks on a very narrow web like two centimeters or something. Right. Uh, you, I think, are in a different league, tell me do. Correct, yeah, as, as I've said, we've really cut our teeth on this technology over the last uh, you know, 20 years or so, where we've made uh, over a billion square meters of x-ray film um, for you know, very demanding markets. 
and we do that at about a meter and a half wide or so. Um, so, you know, it's not just an idea. This has been a proven concept, like I said, for medical films as well as photographic films as well as some other applications that we've made billions of square meters um, and really proven the ability to do that at large scale um, to supply films around the world. Organics and inorganics? Correct. Right. And uh, these would be uh, different solvents for different layers so they don't in mix or how Correct. That so work? that's part of our key uh, key capabilities and know-how that we bring, you know, in terms of a partnership, the expertise that we bring to the table. It's the management of the things like how you get this package to be these discrete layers is really a function of both the chemistry, uh, the formulation of that chemistry, as well as the process. And that's the know-how that we bring of how to manage those material sets in order to deliver, you know, the functionality that you're looking for. I think that's formidable. I think. The width of the web is most unusual. I think that the versatility of high speed and improved integrity of the films is very unusual. And uh, from our point of view, we think you're onto something. We think that you have something that could apply to a very large number of industries, and we wish you well. Excellent. Well, so, uh, is there anything else in your dream you can share with us, or? Um, well, I guess I would just say that really we're actively searching for partners at this point um, that really see the same benefit that we do in multi-layer coding. And, um, you, you know, the, 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 what we see as a, a way to move forward is that, you know, as a partner, we bring the, the expertise in multi-layer coding from the processing side of things, and our partners bring the expertise on the material set and product structure of interest, whether it's batteries or fuel cells or... Um, you know, display films, whatever the case may be, and together we can co-develop some, uh, you know, new technology and proliferate the application of this, you know, well-proven capability uh, to, to new, uh, new processes, I mean, new, new products. And, and you're a substantial company, so you're Correct. able to be a strong partner in that sense, is that right? A absolutely, yeah. How we're, big? A, we're a $1.5 billion company, um, annual revenue. Uh, we sell into about 160 plus countries around the world. We've got a global supply chain and footprint um, in both in US, Central America, Europe, uh, and Asia. Um, so we can, we can really bring that to bear as well. Extremely impressive. Thank you for your time. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Thank you, Peter.